Yeah, well, let me just randomly pick another song. <laughs> I'll just pick one. You know, I'll just pick one. <laughs> randomly, all right? I'm, gonna, I'm not even going to pay attention to what I'm picking. How's that? <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. You looked. I didn't. Oh, yeah. I'm gone yeah. already. Oh, yeah. I'm thinking the record's skipping me. I just can't. I, and I hear that slide guitar. I want to beat some hillbilly with my shoe. <laughs> I hate slide guitar. You pick up your boots and yeah, I hate it. There's another song with slide guitar. I was born. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Gather round. Oh, look around. How do I wonder? How do I wonder? What a joy they had found. Oh, this one alone. 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 Slide guitars for people with no fingers. <laughs> they invented that little bottle so that a guy with a foot could play. B-b-b-bad for the ears. B-b-b-bad for the ears. Yeah, any track, Rob. Pick a number. I'll, I'll hit the track. Three. Number three. Too much for the ticket. This sounds like... Yeah, I think I heard this one already. Cool. <laughs> I'm telling you, that sounds like your song. Yeah. The electric bean or whatever. The <laughs> electric bean. <laughs> Same stupid crap. Now you listen to the beginning of that song and tell me it's not. It will be. Yeah, I know. You know, people think the crash test dummies are in trouble for having every song sound the same. <laughs> All right, very good. We're going to take a break, and then uh, we should come back. And uh, I never did the Cleveland stuff. Maybe we'll do it on Tuesday. Gilbert's here. Oh, Gilbert's Gilbert? here? Uh, what? Oh, you didn't tell me he was coming. Because I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, we mentioned it this morning. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought, the, I thought I mentioned it to you this morning. Oh. I forgot. That was like 12 hours ago. <laughs> He's got a you know big movie out. What is it? Um, Rampart. The Return of Jafar. Oh, another one where it's Gilbert's face is used. Yeah, the straight to video, but it got a good. Another one where Gilbert's just a cartoon character. Yes, he's, he's a that bird. Oh. he has an expanded role. That's what Gene Siskel wow. said. Do you think it's just that people are uncomfortable looking at Gilbert on film, and he's better as a cartoon? I thought it was weird. I heard Gilbert doing Channel Two news uh, commercials. Yeah, that was pretty inventive. I like that. Anyway, I. Uh, but it's kind of weird because Gilbert comes on and says, I'm Ernie Onastas. Yeah, it's funny. And they're kicking him out. Yeah. I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> if I was Channel 2, I'd have Gilbert do the news. <laughs> All right, anyway, i uh, I got to take a break here, Rob, and then we'll come back to some news with Gilbert and everything else. Gilbert's going to join us for the news, Rob, and Gilbert Godfrey. Thank you, Gilbert. It's always good to see Gilbert on a Friday because I have three days to recover. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, dude. Hey, man. <laughs> Gilbert. Yeah. Hey, man. You know, people could laugh at Gilbert, you know, physically and stuff, but he gets laid a lot. I mean, his persona is to say he doesn't get girls and stuff, but he really does. Yeah? Yeah. Is he tied to one girl or does he have many? He has a couple, but he also, but his one girlfriend I met. Is she still in the picture? Uh, the one I met at the hospital when you were dying. Yeah. <laughs> Gilbert was getting all serious. Yeah, the trying blonde. To make him be honest you know what I'm talking about? The blonde. Oh yeah. Nice watch. Yeah. <laughs> Gilbert's quite a dresser too. He's got a big plastic bunny watch on. That, that's how I get the girls. Yeah, and you're dressing yeah. better. Oh yeah. <laughs> Gilbert's apartment must be like there's no closets, just everything strewn on the floor, and whatever clothes he picks up, he throws on. I've never seen a more wrinkled shirt than what Gilbert is wearing. <laughs> He's living your life. Nobody can yell at yep. him about that. Are you, um, you still seeing that blonde? Uh, on and off. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. She was hot, too. Yeah. I mean, she was, yeah, you, did, oh, you didn't meet her. I always think you're no, everywhere I am. I never saw her. Yeah. She was there, and she was, like, nursing Gilbert. <laughs> I'm acting all concerned. Sitting there stroking yeah. his head and all Yeah, this was when Gilbert was going through the thing, like, I don't, I don't know what life it means anymore. I, what you know, am I doing? What am I doing? I think I'm going to quit the business. <laughs> oh, man, you were goofy. He thought he was dying. And Gilbert yeah. came close to death. Mm -hmm. And Gilbert actually started reevaluating his life. 
It was like, <laughs> then I and it was great to be a part of it. There was nothing to reevaluate. You know when he started getting depressed? Yeah. He he'd been in. He had to be rushed into the emergency room because his, not only did his appendix burst, but they it, he came close to infecting his whole hour body. Hour away. Hour okay. away from death. Yeah. And he was calling here saying, "Please don't say anything on the radio. I don't want reporters. I don't want front. I can't." <laughs> and then like two months went by. He was still in the hospital, dying. And that one newspaper had picked up yeah. on it. So Gilbert finally called up and said, could, could you say hello to me on the radio and tell people I'm, I'm sick? The bad part was the reason he wanted to get out of the business house yeah. was because of all... Yeah. He realized how... Few friends he had. Guzzy everybody yeah, is right. in the business. Yeah. They didn't come to visit him or even send a yeah. card. So as soon as they came in and started telling me he was getting better, it was like, oh, maybe I'll stay in the business. Now it's like... He's completely recovered, and now he plays a parrot. Right. Yeah. And he doesn't remember the best. <laughs> and doesn't care. Hey, I could be a parrot? Yeah. It's, a, it's an amazing transformation we saw him go through. I can do an interview for a penthouse? Okay. Because what's so, so screwy about Gilbert is that if, even if you try to interview him, which I have many times, he always puts on his persona, his comic persona. Right. He will not yeah, allow you. Better. He won't let you into his, you know, into his personal life. That's the way he's decided to play it. Even I've seen, I've read some really good interviews with you where you won't even answer a question if someone says, you know, you know, how's your mother? You won't even yeah. answer. It. Yeah. And when he got sick, it's, we suddenly saw the real Gilbert. Yeah. And now I see why he doesn't answer any real questions. Because <laughs> my theory is there is no Gilbert in there. It's just like it's, that shallow character oh, he plays is him. It's so funny. Because it was weird. He was really trying to be real with me, and he just went, uh, uh, and it was like, uh, 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 yeah, like, uh, uh, uh. it was like. I, I, I was like the scene. I sounded like the senile Groucho Marx. Yeah, yeah. It was sad. It was, oh. and, and he looked real old, laying in the hospital bed. And... See, you saw him laying in the bed. They had him propped up in the chair. I was and like the... Groucho when he used to go on the Dick Cavett show. And his sisters were there, and they were disgusted with him. They were just staring at him. And then the girlfriend, who and, was yeah. who was like standing there and finally finding a way to get real with Gilbert, and like maybe Gilbert would Actually, now pay attention to her, hoping that he would come to need her rather than just have sex with her and leave the room. Yeah. One, one time, Robin and Billy West. Came over. I know. Like, they were just like kind of staring around. We didn't know what to do. It's really weird. And Gilbert would would. Well, one thing nice about visiting Gilbert in the hospital, he would just talk and, and yeah. give you the whole story. But after he gave yeah. you the whole story of his appendix, it was like nothing there to talk about. Much time to leave. Yeah, we would just stare at each other. No joke. I mean, Gilbert's no fun when he's yeah. like in serious trouble. Yeah, no voices. Yeah, no voices, no <laughs> shtick. It was just like. There. Um, I called for an ambulance, and um, I didn't. I I I didn't really want to call because. I, uh, I didn't. I, I didn't. I, I didn't want to um, call because if it, if it was a, a public ambulance, it would be in the newspaper. And uh, so, uh, so I we just so we, so I said to him, I said, Gilbert, do you ever hear of a private ambulance service? Like you know, I couldn't even get a blurb and Cindy. Yeah, I know. And, and Gilbert was really afraid that it was going to be a media circus. But he was calling up at first. Oh, it's no. gonna, oh, I can't no. call it to be front page. Mad magazine. I know. No. It was sad. You realize that if you'd like die tomorrow, nobody would even I care. Know. Where would your obituary be? Behind Henry Morgan's. <laughs> They'd have Rich Little doing the parrot. That would be it. And, and Gilbert was like, you know, um, you know, when you have something like this happen to you, I don't know, I, I just want... <laughs> You look at life differently. You do, you do. Turning into Michael Jackson. Yeah, it was just like, hey, man. I want to help little children. But the real Gilbert shone through because what happened was we were standing there and it had been over an hour of listening to Gilbert, you know, go through this meek little routine. <laughs> and then suddenly the black nurse came in and she was all over me. She could care less that it was Gilbert. And she was like asking me to autograph everything in the hospital. And then Gilbert goes to her, um, it's time for you to leave now. Go, leave, leave us. And the black woman shot him a look like... You honky. And then uh, I just said, Gilbert, you're a fool. That's the black woman who has to keep changing your IV. Yeah. She has to bring you a bed pan. Yeah, yeah, he's like, you know, get, get out of here, Beulah. <laughs> no. this, this is the woman who has to give me a rectal thermometer. Yeah, and you're, and you're sitting oh, insulting her. Oh, and I've got a temperature. <laughs> you know, I've had the fever now for four weeks. <laughs> Had a fever. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Robin, you were a nurse. <laughs> Did he say that to you? Yes. Yeah. You understand. Yeah, but at least you didn't get hit up to do favors for Gilbert. No. You only felt comfortable with me. Can you get me a pair of pajamas? I, I worked Without the drawstring? Yeah, yeah, you did. First it was pajamas. No, first it was a robe, then yeah. a, a, uh, pajamas with a drawstring. Yeah. So that it wouldn't hurt your appendix then star. silk. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, even my parents said to me, Tell the guy to call his mother. <laughs> yeah. It was wild. Yeah. And finally, I had to stop getting Gilbert stuff when he when he calls me up at home, like a, like at night, and yeah. says, uh, 
<laughs> Could you get me a thermometer that... What was it? A special kind of thermometer. Oh, yeah. I hardly know Gilbert. Yeah. yeah. Except for doing his show. I mean, it's not like I'm a close friend. I've never even been out with him socially. And he's calling me for stuff because no one, no, the only comedian I could get to uh, visit him was Dice Clay and I had to beg him. But you, oh, Penn and Teller went. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I said, can you go visit Gilbert? <laughs> Everybody it's real came sad. we were begging. Please Nobody even likes visit. Gilbert. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like really weird. It was like Gilbert was ordering from P QVC. I was like, Gilbert. <laughs> he got. They, they told me they won't release me unless I have a thermometer yeah. that can be read. Uh, and a home entertainment center. Wasn't it a digital <laughs> thermometer or something? A digital thermometer. Yeah. I should have a widescreen television. <laughs> <on my TV. laughs> he wants to send me home. <laughs> so he goes, do you have... I wouldn't mind if he asked me for a widescreen television. That I get. I'm supposed to go searching for a digital thermometer. So my wife is getting real annoyed at this point because she's the one going out and shopping for all this stuff. For underpants, special elastic yeah. underpants. So I said... Pajamas. And she's really annoyed because I said, yeah, the guy's sister was sitting right there. What, she can't shop? Our business meetings are now, what size do you think Gilbert is? Yeah, and it was like really uncomfortable. <laughs> so, and the office is piling up with stuff for Gilbert. And you know, Gilbert doesn't offer to pay or anything. I said, you know, and Gilbert's a wealthy guy. Don't let him kid you. He's made a lot of money doing stand-up. He's very good at it. And he, and he, you know, he could have just taken his credit card out called any store and said, yeah. send me up 30 pairs of silk pajamas, <laughs> but he won't do it. He's saving every penny till the end. When, when Billy and Robin were up there, it's like Billy West was like doing voices for yeah, me. And yeah. I'm great. sort of staring at him. And you're out, the, <laughs> yeah, and you're out of the business. Well, well Billy has a real hard good. on to impress you. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, but he, Gilbert really played into it. Yeah. Because he was showing his sisters right. that, you know, he really had show now. Right, right. <laughs> trying to prove trying it. To Billy. I'm trying to impress people with yeah, Billy. Yeah. Billy, do the voice of a honeybee. And right. then he'd go back to sleep. <laughs> Billy, do a half hour of that voice. If Gilbert wanted to prove that the schlubs weren't visiting him, that, like that going, Billy actually had a place in show business. I was going in and out of consciousness. <laughs> yeah. Then he'd wake up and say another voice and Billy yes. would do that. But what's funny is Gilbert's been a New York comic for 25 years, performing every night with 10 other guys, and he calls me for digital thermometer. <laughs> And I'm going, well, okay, hey, why not, okay? So I, I said to my Caroline. wife, I said to my wife, where am I going to get, yeah, call Caroline. You made her a lot of money. I say, I said to my wife, all right, we have to get Gilbert now a digital thermometer. And she said I was getting fed up. And she goes, you know, tell Gilbert that there's a drugstore right in the hospital. He could just tell, just call them up and right downstairs and say, send me up a digital thermometer. So I call Gilbert up and I, and I explain for him 10 minutes. He called down Gilbert to the drugstore and he goes, so... You're not going to get it? You're not going to get me the digital thermometer? I go, no. You're going to call up. And you know what, Gilbert? Wherever your apartment is, I guarantee it, right in that neighborhood, there's 50 drugstores. Okay. Have you ever been to a drugstore in your, in your neighborhood? He goes, Did you send the stereo over? Yeah, and he says, uh, no, I don't believe there is a drugstore in my area. I go, he lives in Manhattan. Yeah, he lives in Manhattan. There's a drugstore every 30 feet. <laughs> he was laying it on thick. So finally I put my foot down. I never got him the digital thermometer. <laughs> yeah. And he managed to get one. Yeah. <laughs> you he got one. I, I thought it was such a weird thing to get. Like you couldn't find it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would be the same way. They're like in every drugstore. Yeah, like but at least I have a wife. If you had a girlfriend, she would have gotten yeah. you. <laughs> Why were you calling, Gilbert? I thought these were major things. <laughs> he didn't realize. He was yeah. still hallucinating. He had never been sick before. <laughs> yeah. You see him in pharmacies for like $4. And when you got out of the hospital, weren't you like eating better for a while and stuff? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That, that, that yeah. lasted, yeah. what, two weeks? <laughs> like you were trying to change your health? But now you're back to just eating any garbage, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't even care about his health anymore. No, could care less. Yeah. <laughs> Gilbert's the best. <laughs> the great Gilbert Godfrey. I'll never forget that time, though. Because he had us all convinced that no one was visiting. Yeah. He yeah. had no fans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was great. <laughs> anyway, I gotta take a break. When we come back, Gilbert, you'll do the news with us. Are you okay. playing? Oh, you're playing somewhere. Oh, I, I knew you didn't just walk in here. Yeah. <laughs> to talk about your hospital experience. Gilbert plays the voice of a parrot. <laughs> <laughs> in the return of in the return of Jafar, direct to video. Jafar. My kids are watching it the other night. As yeah. a matter of fact, I think they turned it off. They they heard Gilbert's voice. Oh. No, they like they like I'm Gilbert. Boy. He's good in that role. They like him. Yeah, and they've expanded it now. Yeah, they expanded it, right? Yes. Maybe that's why it went right to video. <laughs> <laughs> no Robin Williams, just Gilbert, go right to video. It's the uh, sequel to Aladdin. And w so you got pretty good money for that, right? Uh, not great. Not no? Disney, so no. You, th you think you, you would. I mean, you'd been in the first one. It was a success. They needed the same yeah, people the back. This is the sequel, Gilbert. This is where you get yeah. paid. You think that's why Robin Williams didn't do it? Uh, pretty much. Yeah, I heard he didn't get yeah, paid he well either. about the money. Yeah. 
Hmm. So you said, hey, I'll do it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> what the heck? Why not? No one else is coming. <laughs> and also, Gilbert, in the... Um, Oh, okay, he's going to be at Just for Laughs Comedy Festival in Montreal in July, where he'll appear with other comics like this oh, at a festival. Other ah. people who won't visit him when he gets sick. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Go see all the bastards who wouldn't visit you. <laughs> Gilbert can sit alone. <laughs> who else is going to be there, do you know? Uh, oh, Richard Belzer. <laughs> Belzer kind of likes you. Yeah, he was at the hospital. Did he go? Did he come? He used to show up at the hospital and just look at the paper. He wouldn't even talk to me. You ever read the paper? <laughs> and just sit if... in the corner of the room and read the paper. Are is that really kidding? true? Yeah. No. <laughs> How weird is he that? He did. He did. He used to. He'd walk in, say hello, and then he'd sit in the corner. He'd have a paper with him. <laughs> it just wow. Like, wow. <laughs> And he wouldn't like talk to you or anything? He'd fulfill his obligation to visit me. <laughs> he, he but he wasn't going to waste his time. <laughs> he wasn't going to talk to anyone. Because that's what he does here when he's on the show. He sits and reads the paper whenever he gets yeah, annoyed with yeah. me. <laughs> so, like, he would show up and say, hey, Gilbert, how you feeling? And then yeah. after about a couple of conversations. Yeah, and I'd say, well, I have, a, like, a 170 fever. And right. he'd go, oh, oh, sorry. And he'd walk over to a chair and sit down and, and open the paper. And the two of you would be alone in the room? Yeah. And, and like, he would just sit there and read? And would you say yeah. anything to him? Uh, no, it's like I used to like be looking at the ceiling, looking at the IV dripping, and looking at the paper. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> that's Gilbert's, a cool move. Gilbert's hospital stay was maybe the best hospital stay of all time. You really should be talking about that. In your and it act. went on and on and on. It went on way too long. He was in the hospital forever. We yeah. thought he was never coming out. Oh, that's why we even finally broke down and went and visited him. We felt bad. Oh, man. Howard says to me, I really think Gilbert's dying. I gotta go visit him. Yeah. It would be wrong not to. And I heard no one else is going. And then I, then Robin and I got on a campaign to get people to visit Gilbert. <laughs> and then I finally convinced Dice, I hardly know him. I mean, I feel bad for him, but I hardly know him. I said, but Dice, imagine how good it'll make him feel. You show up at the hospital and you, you know, and, and Gilbert will be really proud. And, yeah. you know, hopefully some people will see it, like the nurses and junk. Yeah. At least, you know, maybe his mother will be there and see yeah, it. Yeah, maybe Gilbert will be treated better. Yeah, Dice said he went in there. There were cobwebs on the visitor's seat. <laughs> no, for Gilbert. He's the most unpopular man in show business. He's made zero friends. Dice says, yeah, I went over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was the best. Gilbert was, he had a wake before he died. Well, the best part was that Gil Gilbert really expected just to be in there for a few days, and then when it turned into a couple of weeks, and he was desperately calling, saying, please mention that I'm in the hospital. Yeah. <laughs> but at first he was like, don't mention it. In yeah. intensive care. Uh, <laughs> and listen to him drone on with medical stories. Oh, he oh, had God. to tell everybody that story. <laughs> you became a real sucker when you were dying. Oh, and yeah. And then I did the worst thing. Yeah. I took a hot bath. <laughs> and then, oh, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. The yeah, night that he was his, he was told that he better be careful because his appendix was bursting. <laughs> so he's unconscious. He passes out on the floor. He goes, I passed out There's on the floor. There's passing out all over my apartment. So what does he do? He decides, I know what I'll do. He doesn't call an ambulance because he doesn't want the papers finding about it. And plus, he's too cheap to pay for an ambulance. He doesn't know how to pay for an ambulance. He doesn't know what to do. He doesn't want black guys dragging him out while he's unconscious. He doesn't know anything. And he doesn't want anyone in his apartment. He says, I know what I'll do. I'll take a hot bath. <laughs> A guy's yeah. passing out in his apartment. His cure is to take a hot bath. Like a maybe, of water. Like maybe this is just nerves. <laughs> I can't stand up. Let me get into the water. Yeah, maybe it's just tension. Yeah, it's tension. So he gets in there and he passes out in the tub and almost drowns. And all that gunk that's spewing out from his appendix and the bursting is in the tub with him. Looks like aliens invaded the tub. It's great. Because your appendix burst while you were in the tub, right? Yeah, but he wasn't open. I think he was vomiting in there. You vomited a few times, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah everything. That was on the floor. <laughs> what happened? How'd you, you finally called an ambulance? Oh, you called someone who got an ambulance. I, I, I went to a doctor. But how did you get out of the apartment after you passed out of the tub? He crawled. <laughs> Seriously, what did you do? I mean, you were passing out. When you were in the tub, what happened? I, I eventually came to. I eventually, yeah. uh, the next morning, I go to a doctor. <laughs> You're a real fight. You know, you have such a great life. I guess you didn't want to give up. Oh, yeah. But do you have a phone? I, I should have let myself die. <laughs> but you have a phone in the apartment, right? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so one of the modern conveniences no, I, I remember. Had. I remember what he said. He said, you know, because every time he stood up, he collapsed. Yes. Yeah. He started crawling I around. Was. <laughs> but, I mean, how did you, like, get from your apartment? Eventually, I was, I got over that stage, and the next morning... I you were able to doctor. walk to the doctor? Yeah. Wow. I really, you know, Gilbert's so uptight, I just would, like, operate on himself, you know, and hope for the best. Yeah, With nail clippers. Yeah. I got to take a break, Gilbert. Yeah. But, uh, the doctor was going to send me home. 
Was he? Yeah. I and went there. He looked. I told him what was wrong. He goes, well, I guess you really pay for the best medical yeah. advice. <laughs> Yeah, a cat doctor. <laughs> I went to a vet. Have you been neutered? I mean, it was obvious. The guy was passing out. The guy was passing out in his home and, and like and able to walk around on the floor. The doctor says, "Why don't you just go home?" Yeah, <laughs> he didn't want to talk to me. Right, another big fan of yours. <laughs> Who are you again? Hey, go die, Gilbert. Yeah. <laughs> oh, maybe I better put you in the hospital. Go die at home, like Jackie O. <laughs> No, Gilbert wanted all measures taken. Yeah. He didn't have a living will. Did you watch Jackie O's funeral? Oh, yeah. yeah. A little bit. It's pretty Wasn't wild. Was embalmed in the house? Yeah. Yeah. We talked to the guy who did it. Oh. Well, who brought the... Uh... Embalming fluid. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's charming. I'd like to be living in that building. Yeah, his body, a rotting corpse yeah. smelling of the place. And people are standing outside because they know the body's there. Yeah. I think those were all tenants that couldn't take the stink. <laughs> All right, we got to take a break. We'll be back right after these words with Gilbert Gottfried and the news. Gilbert's in here telling me, you know, I said, hey, Gilbert, what are you doing for Memorial Day? But he really gets emotionally involved on Memorial Day. He, yeah? Um, yes. He likes to sit around his apartment and think about the people who died in yeah. wars. Is that right? And fought for us. Isn't I watch right? Platoon. I have it on a loop. <laughs> me, I just go in front of the Sony building and salute. Yes. <laughs> Actually, I throw duty at it. Yes. <laughs> Well, I was going to ask you, you know, D-Day is coming up. Does that pull any strings for you being a vet? Yeah, sure does. Last Memorial Day, I painted myself yellow <laughs> and yelled at myself. <laughs> in the mirror? You know I served in Vietnam, don't you? Oh, yeah, yeah. in Da Nang. Yeah, yeah there yeah. too. <laughs> and, uh, God, it was the best years of my life in some ways, and maybe the worst in some. Yeah. yeah. In Kaling. Yeah. No, but Gilbert sits around his apartment and remembers the dead. Yes. I have the dead in my Yes, apartment. that's right. Thinks about soldiers. Yes. So I think that a lot of people can respond to that, you know? Give us your calls. <laughs> if you have anyone in your family who died, uh, give, give, give Gilbert a call right now so you guys can talk. Yeah, we're very sensitive. Coming up. Green Come. Beret. Blood of the Green Beret. <laughs> If I see one more movie with this in it, uh, uh, every movie and TV show, that's whenever why that guy's a star, whenever a guy, that's where George Thorogood makes his money. Whenever a guy in a movie like loses his girlfriend, then all of a sudden, toward the end of the movie, he jumps into his car with the right. top down. He hops over the. He doesn't even use the door. He hops over the door yeah. right into the car. Puts the sunglasses. Puts the sunglasses yeah. on, and he goes chasing after the girl before she marries some other guy. And it's, I just tell you right, right. <laughs> so that's absolutely true. He must have made a billion dollars off and of that. And it was in Problem Child, too. Was it? Yeah. What, what was the scene? Uh, oh, the kid, uh, kid's going to do something bad. That's he, it. Right. Basically. He's going to do something bad, and then it was... <laughs> yeah, there's a close-up of his face. He crunch, scrunches his face up, and yeah. then... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm going to do in my movie? What? I'm going to have that music playing, and I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to stand there. I'll do my taxes. I'll do my taxes. <laughs> as soon as you start to write. Yeah. Da -da 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 -da. You'll start flossing your teeth. Right. Da -da 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 -da. It's going to be the greatest movie. Already it's 30 hours long, this movie. Everything I ever wanted to do. I'm going to put in one movie. Allison, what's two plus two? Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's time to help the kids get their right. homework. <laughs> it's dad's time to help the kids. <laughs> da -da 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 -da. <laughs> well, anyway. B -b -b Better in math. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Gilbert's here. By the way, Gilbert's here to plug the fact that he's a parrot in the return of Jafar. <laughs> What a career. All right. It's a good thing I live. My kids really dig Aladdin, so there must be something to that. And I saw them watching Return of Jafar the other night. This is why I survived. Jafar, Howard. Whatever. I'm sorry, I haven't learned all the names of the Disney characters. Yes. That's very important. And it's a sequel to Aladdin, and it's at your video store. I guess Gilbert gets a couple of pennies off of each video because he's here promoting it. Not really. Really? No. It just looks like a good credit. Yeah. I've been playing, yeah. playing a comedy club. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it'll give some people in Hollywood the idea that you're available for other kinds of work. Yeah. Right. I, sh I should have, like, uh, 
one of those Merry Christmas greetings in show business. Uh, you haven't done a movie in a while. Uh, no. Eddie Murphy not tapping you for the new Beverly Hills. Oh, no. Because the one that you were in Beverly Hills, too, he yeah. was on saying it was the worst movie ever made. Oh, yeah. It, you know, and, like, he doesn't want... This new Beverly Hills isn't anything like the Beverly That's Hills, right. too. They go all the way back to the first Beverly Hills and bring those people yeah. back. You know what that means? Is it cold? Like, no Gilbert in this one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> What's the story on that cartoon? What do you have to do? You just go to a studio for a couple of days yeah. and read a script? Yeah, you just yell into a microphone. And the, and do they, do have... they direct you to put more energy in it so you yell louder and stuff yeah. like that? Oh, oh yeah. Isn't it funny Like when they have like a guy from Disney sitting there, like the director, and he's going... Uh, could no, you, could can... you make it help Aladdin rather than help Aladdin? Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Could you make it like uh, uh, I have to find the lamp rather than I have to find the lamp? Yeah. Maybe try it that way. I have to find the lamp. Like, I've done commercials where clients will sit there. Yeah. And they'll say, uh, you're not doing it right. <laughs> Read it this way. And it's like, oh, my God, you're kidding. And it sounds exactly the same. I remember doing one. It was Beach MTV. No, it's Beach MTV. Oh. Huh? Beach MTV. <laughs> Beach MTV. Beach MTV. Okay. Beach no, MTV. No, 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 no. Yes, like Beach kind of a MTV. Russian word. Beach MTV. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, today's news is brought to you by Budweiser. Proud. To be your bud. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a good one for bud. They should use that, too, since everybody else does. I think it's a great idea. The news is brought to you by... Bud. Yeah, bud. Proud to be your bud. You know, I'm just going to play that at my house this weekend, and every time I do something, I'm going to have it start up. <laughs> carry that around. With have that with you all the time. Yeah. So, Robin, what's in the news? Well, Howard, first I wanted to tell you, you know, um, these are some of the, the stories I live to do. In Union, Kentucky, a high school honor student killed his parents and two sisters yesterday morning, <laughs> calmly went into his trigonometry class, showed the teacher and his classmates his gun, and surrendered, saying... I've had a bad day. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, where, where, where's my gun? I killed Name all my parents. <laughs> and then I killed my classmates. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy spoke in class today. Clay Shroud. Clay Shroud. Yes. No, Clay. Good Clay. Just round. He was described by one neighbor as really weird. Really, really weird. Really, really weird. The bodies in the kitchen. Mom and dad are a pain in the ass. He shot his parents and his sister. He was mad at the whole family. Just my whole parents. <laughs> Had a bad day. But bad to my family. Well, he should be like the Menendez boys and just say the parents force him to take tennis oh, lessons. Oh, I'm sure he's looking for right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there's, there's got to be a, a way out of that one. Yeah, made me wear white shorts. Yeah, they were real bad. They I, made me do my homework. My dad <laughs> fingered me. In fact, they didn't even make me do my homework. My dad did my homework. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my dad doesn't let me do my homework on my own. <laughs> yeah. My dad wrote all my papers. On well, my appendix purse, my dad wouldn't buy me stretch pajamas. <laughs> <job. laughs> he was always dressed in black, according to the neighbors, and is now being held in Kenton County Jail, charged with the four counts of murder. Cool. 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 Police He's bad. say that there was some kind of domestic <laughs> quarrel that <laughs> went on. That's cool. <laughs> but they would not be specific. Hold on a second. About the reason for the argument. Yeah. They arrested him at the high school <laughs> after they went to the home and discovered the four bodies. So, uh, there you have it. Cool. B -b 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 bodies. Burn them tonight. Ink you, Biss. That's a problem, child. How old is he again, Robin? 17. Ooh. Oh, that's not a little boy. Don't yeah. you think that if your son starts wearing all black... You should just get out of the He's house. He's got a Belzer complex. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty yeah. soon he'll walk around the house going, you know, and hey, you know, we're not worried about third world nations. Or I'm going gonna, gonna to read the newspaper here in the corner. Don't bother me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there are warning signs when your kid is going bad. 
and when you should leave the house. I just spent a whole commercial break talking to Gilbert about, I said, wait a second, let me get this straight. Belzer sat in the corner when he visited you in the hospital. It's like sitting in a bus terminal. <laughs> you know, there's other people there. And he said it was like sitting in a bus terminal with another guy while he reads the paper waiting, yeah. <laughs> waiting for something to happen. I said, you know, usually when someone visits you in the hospital, they bring you something to read. <laughs> Gil, uh, Gilbert gets a visit from Belzer. He says hi, sits down in the corner and just reads the newspaper. Yeah, he yeah. brought himself something to read. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> And then when he gets through with that, like if it'd be magazines that I had, he'd take that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Two warm guys bonding. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, when I die, don't invite Belzer to the funeral. Lots <laughs> of sensitivity there. Yeah, right, yeah. He'll well, sit by the he coffin came. reading. Yeah, Sturm was a great guy, sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. Right, yeah. Yeah. yeah, like he did a lot of jokes about like you know black people, like that's really needed. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like, like someone should brought him like he cared about Pick people. on a yeah. weaker people. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Why don't you find someone more depressed? <laughs> you know, like, like making fun of starving children is really funny. Yeah, yeah. So we'll sit here and honor him in his grave. Yeah, yeah. right, yeah. 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 yeah, we'll all shed a tear. Yeah, yeah. yeah he makes yeah. fun of people who are living in countries where they can't get food or medical attention. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's really very funny. funny. Yeah, very yeah. funny. Yeah. yeah, that's that's real comedy. Yeah, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Makes, makes fun of places. Is where like diseases are wiping out entire villages. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah babe. Yeah, Why don't really you learn fun. to do a joke? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll sit and shed a tear for yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's your eulogy. I'm gonna have that <laughs> eulogy. Yeah, right. <laughs> Thanks. I love it. Go ahead. All right, here we go. A courageous six-year-old helped police do a composite sketch of the man who had raped her. Yes, yeah, six-year-old. <laughs> oh, stop a it, six-year-old was raped. Yeah, yeah, they say this guy's a serial <laughs> rapist, and he usually picks on young girls. Most of his victims have been below the age of 19, and he oh, seems yeah. to particularly favor 10-year-olds. Did you just, uh, did you see the picture? It looked just like Gilbert. Oh! <laughs> yeah, when he was wearing his hair spicy. Yeah. yeah. Gilbert has changed his hairdo because she told me she was seven. <laughs> <laughs> she swore to me she was seven. From what I understand... She told me she was potty trained. <laughs> From what I understand, uh, he sort of maneuvered his way into the little girl's apartment and offered her a mint and when she said yes she'd like to take a mint from him he took her up to the roof and great did his business uh, so that when they catch the guy of course there's no death penalty vote yeah. for me vote for me he'll be dead imagine that man that's now that even gilbert will admit is sick yeah uh, they have linked him to a number of other attacks Jackie and thought most it was of the funny, victims but... are between the ages of 10 and 15 years old yeah so he really doesn't like older girls. Usually, you know, there's one uh, woman who was accosted by a man who fit this description. She was 19, and the moment she showed any resistance at all, he ran away. So he's looking for the really timid and docile. So how's a guy get that sick? You know, you know what I mean? Like, you, you, you kind of sort of understand a male rapist who rapes adult females. You do? Yeah, I mean, I don't. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> you can kind of comprehend yes. that. Yes. Gilbert can. Yeah. yeah. Right. Gilbert. Let me, let, me, let me talk to Gilbert on this one. <laughs> yeah. You can see, like, you know, he's totally, you know. To me, it's perfectly normal. You know, and they even say, like, maybe he's angry at his mother, and every woman represents yeah. his mother. Like, Joel Rifkin was killing his mother each time or something. Whatever yeah, the hell. Yeah. He... Was his mother five? See, that's what I'm saying. Like, where do you get, <laughs> get angry at, like, six-year-olds? How sick do you have to be? <laughs> but there's no death penalty. But he'll go to prison and be called short eyes, and the other prisoners will beat him to death. Oh, boy. I know. I always read about that, but you never hear of many of them dying. No, they just like to keep him alive and beat him. Yeah. No, they, they lock him up separately. Do That's they? the problem. Yeah, they protect him. They should put him in with the population. Yeah, yeah. why are That's we what protecting I would do. these people? Right. I would put serial rapists in with the population. Right, and let things happen. Yes. <laughs> I but agree it's not with just you. rapists. They just don't like people who rape kids for some reason. Yeah, right. Criminals. Yeah, they don't mind if you rape. As yeah. Long as you don't rape kids. Yeah, rapist is pretty common. Yeah. It's child molesters yeah. that get killed. Yeah, you never let the other prisoners find out that you were a molester. Wow, a six-year-old. Dude. 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 Yeah, how Dude. do you do that? Dude. Dude. Oh, man. <laughs> Dude. Jeez. Dude. A Bronx woman... What's it like, Fred, to have a six-year-old? Oh, stop it. <laughs> a Bronx woman says her doctor addicted her to codeine and then Jeez. lured her into improper and deviant sex acts. See, that, see that idea. Yeah. 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 I can see that. Now, this you understand. 
Sure I do. Yeah. I understand that. Uh, See, that's something like most men really envy. That's being a guy. Yeah, yeah. That makes perfect sense. No, 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 normal. No, 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 normal. <laughs> what? There's a clinical psychologist on the air who says he can explain why oh, okay. people no rape way. six-year-olds. All right. <laughs> I made a study of it. Oh, he's got a good explanation. Oh, all right. I didn't realize there was an reason. explanation. Okay. Yeah. Well, hello. Hello. All right, turn off your radio. Oh, great. Well, by the way, we should mention that this guy's wife is four years old. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to explain the attraction. Yes. So why do you like four-year-olds? <laughs> hello? Hi. No, explain to me why someone would like a six-year-old. Um, <laughs> they're Italian. What kind of thing is that? Don't disparage my people. <laughs> Hello. Yes. Is this how it starts? Yes, it is, Doctor. How are you? All my right. name is Doctor Ring. All right, know. Doctor. Now you don't date four-year-olds, do you? No, but the funny thing is, I am Oriental. You're not married to a four-year-old. You're Doctor Ang. Yeah, I am a Doctor Ang, as a matter of fact. And uh, the thing is, I can tell you. Oh, yeah. One I come out of here, kid. Orientals, can I say? Oh. Uh, school me. Excuse me. Oh, I hear I come out of kid. No, 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 no. Go ahead. O Orientals are a little bit, they're a timid race. The yes. male agenda, I would yeah, say. Yeah, during World War II, they were very timid. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. They're they, timid. They, they're kind of shy. Ever get, ever get a shot in the nuts from a karate dude? <laughs> no. They own America, but yeah. they're very they're timid. They're very timid. Yeah. They've only bought up everything. Yes. <laughs> they have. No, those are the, Jap those are the Japanese. <laughs> Bastards took over the whole record industry, and you're telling me they're timid. <laughs> <laughs> no, they are timid. Who are you talking about? The, the Chinese? Male, the male? I like the Orientals. Go ahead. Uh, okay, okay, Mr. You're Shane. an Oriental who uses the term Oriental. Oh, yes. Well, why not? Oh, it could be Oriental. It could be Asian. You could say it. I hey, would, by the uh, way, happy Memorial Day. <laughs> M -m Memorial <laughs> Day. Much, <laughs> Your people were very uh, gracious uh, during World War II. Yeah. Well, he Are you Japanese? Uh, no, I am uh, of Chinese. I'm Chinese descent. Oh, you're Chinese? Yes, I am, Mr. Thurn. And Hey, Robin, how are you? But anyway, I'm a great listener of you guys. You guys are really great. And uh, as I was saying, the reason why... Please, person, please don't drag this out. Just give me the reason. The reason why is he's been rejected by older women. That's the reason why. And the, and the younger woman, he's been so timid to, of, of confronting older women and that they reject him. He's probably an ugly mutt. That's the first thing. But the thing is, to resort down to a younger age, this is what he does. He, the younger age girls will... I thought rape was always like a violence thing. Yeah. It is a violence thing. Yeah. It's a power thing. So well, what he's saying is he's so he's afraid not, of adult women because he's going to get his ass kicked. They're too powerful for him. Yeah. Because he's a timid person, I would assume. You know, yeah. he's, not, he's not a... Uh, that's that's how I have to view it. All right, dude. Thanks, man. That's it. Okay. One thing. Yeah. One thing. I gotta say hello to all my. Yeah. That that was that was really uh, deep philosophical. Yeah, things. we couldn't have figured that out. No, on like we our didn't own. say that twenty minutes ago. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He uh, he rapes kids because he likes to. He must be timid. <laughs> yeah. All right. He's got a, somewhat of an explanation. Can I go on with my story about the sex slave? Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> Mary Butkowski. Butkowski. <laughs> has accused... Cow of butt. <laughs> Butts of cow. Her doctor <laughs> of a 16-year pattern of misbehavior that continued until March 22nd. 16 years. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it started when they both worked at the Bronx Psychiatric Center. How come everyone in the news says Polish? <laughs> <laughs> it's the Polish news on All Friday. Right. He was treating her for uh, migraine headaches, I guess, and started giving her these drugs improperly, according to her, and she became addicted. And once she was hooked, Howard... He banged her. He banged her with all the prescriptions unless she performed improper and deviant sadomasochistic sex. I'm a bad doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I rape Polish women. <laughs> <laughs> he had her blindfold him. <laughs> <laughs> and cover him with whipped cream and chocolate. Right. Hurt him, and then perform and I'm getting oral hungry. sex. Wow. Yeah. Oh. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's fantastic. <laughs> then he would provide her provide her with phony prescriptions. Phony, but that's fantastic. It's unbelievable. <laughs> the pair would then engage in sexual acts in motels, her home, oh, yeah. his car. <laughs> 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 All right. So anyway, uh, she now says that uh, this was very wrong. <laughs> and she couldn't get away from him until March 22nd of this year when she got herself to a detox center. Oh, whipped cream ran out. <laughs> what? <laughs> what was that? The whipped cream ran out. So she got to the detox center. And then she was released three weeks ago and figured out that this was all wrong. Ah. 
<laughs> so he's now taking the necessary steps to file a lawsuit against the county. <laughs> Let me take a break, Robin. Probably the lawyers are all giving out drugs now. No, they're not. Yeah. You see, you'd like to see that. That'd be funny. Yes. That would be dramatic. Okay, thank you. Just imagine it. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll be back I, right after just, these I words. Was playing with it. With sorry. the parrot from Jafar <laughs> right after this. You know, it's hard to do these commercials with Gilbert here because he's such a he's so loony. But uh, the Iowa Iowa makes great sound system. Gilbert would never buy himself a sound system for his apartment and enjoy some music or something. You don't have music, Gilbert? You don't listen to music? Well, no, I, I live next door to tenants who play the radio. Uh -huh. <laughs> I keep my ear to the wall. Do you go Is to concerts? Right? Yeah. Do you have actually like a stereo system in the, in the house? Uh, yeah. Do you? Yeah. Is like, it like a like mini one system? The Flintstones or... Oh, yeah, right. The yeah. Or a boombox? <laughs> No, but you know, even if you like, you watch TV, right? And you have a VCR, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I have one of those like Board of Education record players. No, but you have a, you have a, a VCR, right? Uh, yes. And you have a TV. Yes. So wouldn't you like to hear that great sound? I mean, you got some money. You know what you do? You buy one of these Iowa mini systems. You plug the TV into it, and you've got concert sound coming out of your TV. It's fantastic. Okay, this might be it's fantastic. It really is great. Yeah. Unbelievable. Gilbert doesn't want his environment too nice, or else he might never yeah. leave the apartment. He might not want to treat himself that well. He basically doesn't deserve it. <laughs> the NSX 5200 is the mini system from Iowa. You guys are going to love this one. Put it anywhere. It fits right on the shelf. It's the size of a small microwave oven, half a microwave oven. And then you get great sound, three different CDs. You can play at once. You can change two of them while the other one is playing. You have a dual cassette deck. It is live. It, it sounds like live concert in your house. And if it's too loud, you make it lower. It's unbelievable. It's Iowa. And here's something free. Call right now, 1-800-B-U-Y-A-I-W-A, extension 311, and they'll send you a free uh, catalog of all their stuff. And it's really nice to shop at home. 1-800-B-U-Y-A-I-W-A. Iowa makes the best. <laughs> the Hauser Show. I guess they did stick us together. <laughs> I'm so annoyed right now that, uh... What are you annoyed with? The way he's talking on the radio, I think it's disgraceful. Hmm. He should be ashamed of himself. Yes. Yeah. Me, just as another listener, I just... I just want to say that, um... Uh, I can see what the upsetting that is to, to some people, but he has such a such a large, large crowd of fans. Unfortunately, yeah. Excuse me? Unfortunately, yes. Hmm. Well, I don't know how they hooked us up together. Maybe it was purposely. You think so? <laughs> Who knows, right? Mm hmm Excuse me, ladies. I gotta pass some wind. Hold on a second. I'll get right to you. Oh my goodness! Ma'am, did you hear that? Hi, ladies. Uh, hello. Yes. Who is this? Uh, my name is Isabel Peters. Well, I don't need your name. Oh, okay. I thought. Oh, well, I'm just a girl from the Harleysville. Well, why do you have to announce where you live and where you are and all of that, Isabel? Okay, there's no reason for me to say that? No, I'm, I'm talking to you on the radio. I don't need to identify you. I'm very sorry. I mean, unless you want to identify yourself, I mean, that's your option. No, 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 I don't care to. Uh, is this Howard Stern I'm speaking to? Yes, okay, Isabel. Okay, well, I, I highly regard your advice, and I just want to say that... Hold on, hold on, i got to pass someone. Hold on a second. <laughs> Oh my goodness. That's how you get people to have good attitudes, right? <laughs> All right, you girls wanted to complain to me, is that it? Isabel and the other woman on the phone? Yes, I did, sir. About what, Robin's last news story? Uh, no, sir, I want to hear advice. Uh, advice. Oh, I'm sorry, you, we were told you had complaints no, about the... the other lady who has the complaint. Ma'am, do you have a complaint? Yes, I do. 
All right, then go ahead. Let me hear it. Okay, I just came in. And excuse Robin's farting. <laughs> It's a terrible problem. It's a terrible gaseous problem. Mm, you're very rude. Oh, I am? Mm-hmm. How do you think I, did, I just came in from work this morning, <laughs> and I was told, in your I was listening to you. Yeah. And my sons told me that you have two or three children yourself. Yes. And I, I think you're you're disgraceful. Thank you. You're disgraceful to men, period. To what men? Did or, mm-hmm. What did I do wrong? He's, uh, talking about raping. Did you hear it? Child. Did you hear it? Did you hear what I said? Uh, yeah, when I walked in the door from work, I said, what in God's name is going on? I yes. didn't know it was your show, because I usually listen to WOR, which is a much classier show. Oh, right. John Gambling puts a lot of effort into his program. Mm-hmm. His daddy gave it and to you him. you put a lot of effort into yours. I most certainly do. Do you think, would you like your children to listen to your show? Are you crazy? I never let them listen. I'm sure. With the disgusting <laughs> stuff I talk about? Exactly. I'm, I, I'm smarter That's than that. What's going to happen when the day comes when they're going to get your tape and they're going to listen to it? What are they going to say? I'm going to get the best psychiatrist in the country to sit them down and explain to them why their father's a sick, sick man. So then you see, I got my head screwed on straight, don't I? Sure, we need a psychiatrist. Yeah. Hey, by the way, what's the weather going to be this weekend? I don't know. You have to know after gambling told you 55 times. That's all he does all morning. Yeah. And all the other ones also. Hey, what else? Did, so what did I do wrong? Why should I be ashamed of yourself? First of all, child. you didn't even hear what I said. I said that the guy who did it should be gassed and killed, and that I, if I was the governor, I'd have him killed. I guess that's an awful thing to say. Uh, well, I guess I didn't come in at that part of it. I yeah, I guess you did it. I guess you don't know anything about it, do you? you? Continue on and on and on about it. You are not allowed uh, uh, to listen to this program even by I accident. Would believe me, you I are would not, not. You are not mentally capable. Show. I would never listen to your show. It was my. My Tell me something. That are home from college, unfortunately, listen to you. Listen to me. You just said to me, mm-hmm. I went on and on and on about it too long. How long shall one be allowed to talk Mom, about this? Mom, leave him alone. Yeah, Mom, right. Th- hey, hey, get off the phone. I'm yelling at your mother. It's about Mom, time. how is this funny? Leave him alone. He's the best. Tell her. You hear that? Yeah. My children think you're the best. That idiot's also, obviously. No, you raised them. It's not our <laughs> You raised those idiots. <laughs> Don't blame us. To listen to you, there must be. Well, let me tell you something. You're an old biddy, and you're completely out of touch with reality. How long can you talk about this subject? Yeah, to answer my question, how long is one allowed to talk about this subject? You said we went on too long. How long? You made fun of it. You did we didn't make fun, fun of the rape. We talked about the rapist being a mental case. What kind of idiot gets attracted to a six-year-old? Yeah. What? What was the fun? I'm gonna. Call, I'm gonna give you a name, Mrs. Idiot, because you don't <laughs> listen to what I'm saying. You just Thank comment. You. Thank you, sir. All right, that will be and your you're name. Idiot number two. Maybe so, but you're the first. First lady of idiots. Okay, thank you. You're Goodbye. welcome. When you Bye-bye. Call, identify yourself. Yeah, when you call me next time, say, this is Mrs. Idiot. <laughs> Idiot number one. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, what did you want? Hello? Oh, that Maybe one's she gone. hung up, too. Are you there? <laughs> All right, they're both gone. I think the other one lost their nerve. Well, obviously, uh, if she was ever raped, it was by someone who was deaf and blind. <laughs> You know what? She probably got confused because she heard us talking about the rape of the six-year-old. Right. And then I went into the story of the sex slave thing. Yeah. And she came in on that. <laughs> yeah. And we were still talking about the six-year-old. So she's so confused. Well, at least her her sons had their heads screwed on straight. Yeah. I was happy to see they that. They heard the whole program. We never heard what Isabella had to say, or whatever her name was. Isadora. Real Rossellini. <laughs> Isabella Rossellini. <laughs> Mama Cita, Mama Cini. <laughs> Well, I'm b- 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 bad to the bone. <laughs> <laughs> Going on with the news, Bob Barker has been hit up for $8 million. Price is right. Model. Diane Parkinson. Parkinson. Hey, don't say anything bad about Diane Parkinson. I'm very close to her. I'm not going to say anything bad. I'm going to just report the story. <laughs> Although it does seem Bob a little weird. Bob came forward yesterday and told Entertainment Tonight that he did indeed have about an 18-month relationship with Diane. <laughs> he said it was just a case of two middle-aged consenting adults. <laughs> middle-aged, the guy's 70. <laughs> <laughs> well, if he looks to be 200, he's middle-aged. <laughs> right. And uh, they consider Parkinson's 
request for eight million dollars a shakedown. Shakedown. <laughs> Parkinson, on the other hand, says that she was coerced into the relationship with Barker and that she didn't enjoy it and that eventually she felt that she was forced to resign from the show because she was so uncomfortable. That seems weird, though. She even says that she complained to the producers of the show and that they began paying her hush money of $1,000 a week to keep quiet about the situation. I saw Bob Barker on Entertainment Tonight talking about it and he just said, hey, look, I uh, banged her for 18 months. I told her that I wanted to break it off, and she's not used to having guys tell her they want to break it off. So she freaked out, and she's all jealous. <laughs> <laughs> for a year and a half, I had, on occasion, sexual intercourse with Diane Parkinson. It was a case of two middle-aged consenting adults having sex. Yeah, the guy was 68 years <laughs> old at the time. <laughs> she may feel like a woman scorned, Barker quipped, because he was the one who broke off the relationship. For Dracula, it's middle-aged. <laughs> but why did you, yeah, right, but why did, why did Bob Barker, I mean, why did Diane wait three years to come forward with her story? And why did she accept payoff money? Maybe she thought they were going to come to some form of settlement hmm. because she had complained. I don't know, but I know I can get her. She told me I could. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I, she was here, and I said, hey, let me let me uh, see what it's like to kiss you. And she opened her mouth. I oh, wow. And then, like, <clears throat> she told me she really digs me. Oh, I mean, but boy. really, and she would like to go out with me. For those of Keep you going. who are wondering if Bob Barker is I'm cheating on his wife, his this wife this died. Tonight. Yeah, I thought Bob Barker was married, but it turned out she dropped dead. He's got every guy's fantasy. If I could get Diane Parkinson, I'd kill my wife. <laughs> <laughs> you would get married just to kill your yes. wife. Just, just smother her in her sleep. <laughs> so she opens her mouth, man. Oh, man. That never happened to Gilbert. <laughs> he says to me, I never kiss a girl and have her open my mouth. Really? He's no. never I, I never that. have one say hello. Hello <laughs> <laughs> is fantastic. <laughs> I saw this girl. I said, what are you doing here? She said, I was invited. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I couldn't believe this story, Howard. Uh, you know that Macaulay Culkin is going to uh, play Ricky Rich in the movies? Yeah. Gilbert's well, going to be the voice of the parrot. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. In the movie, as Ricky Rich, Macaulay zips around on one of those uh, all-terrain vehicles, those motorized bikes for kids. Yeah, AVs or something. And uh, RVs. whoever has seen it, some organization now says that this is very wrong <laughs> and Macaulay will be a bad role model for kids because they'll see it and then they'll want to rush around like he does without a helmet going very fast, too. And this could be very dangerous copycat behavior for them. So before the movie even comes out, mm -hmm. these people are saying Macaulay Culkin is bad for being in a movie. It is not the fault of the parents who buy these kids these vehicles right. and then let them go out unsupervised Did and don't ever, give them safety lessons. You ever see that on TV when, like, these parents are into having their kids race like these machines? Oh, yeah. And the kids are, like, five years old. They can barely drive them. And they don't know it's unsafe. Yeah. I never knew it could turn over. Yeah, so now they're afraid of the movie. So don't take the kid to the movie. But it's so simple. You don't want your kid to do it. Don't buy them the vehicle. They can't go and buy it themselves. Well, you're on fire about this. Yeah. But it's so stupid to say it's McCarthy. Uh, uh, I'm down. Bring your gas problem. You're getting really uptight. If yeah. they had shown him zipping around, my kid would have never driven this. <laughs> All right, I know what you're saying. I agree. I just wanted to see you get that upset. Sorry, I'm just getting worked up about these <laughs> The state health department yesterday yanked the license of a Manhattan doctor for performing. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Were you doing this? Performing yeah. abortions on women who weren't pregnant? No, I just yanked it. <laughs> In a filthy <laughs> clinic with blood splattered walls. <laughs> what are you I saying? Mean, the guy would the guy would tell the women they were pregnant. Yes, he'd then... take a urine test. It would come back negative. He'd uh, operate on them anyway. Wow. But how much do you have to see before you realize you're in a bad place? You know, there's blood on the walls, there's syringes all over the floor and trash, dirty instruments. Sounds like Jackie's house. <laughs> oh, right. And you lay down and let them give you anesthesia? That's the doctor I went to. <laughs> Robin, we're talking about this too long. A woman just called me and said our time's up on this subject. <laughs> Dr. Young Ho Kwan. Young Ho Kwan. 
Some of these, some of these guys who come from another planet. <laughs> Was advertising in El Dario. Yeah, who would go to a doctor named Dr. Young Ho Kwan? Uh, clean $150 sure. abortion. That's what Gilbert went for his appendix. Now, now the first week is free, right? Okay. <laughs> See? <laughs> But uh, they now, say that once he got you... Break, right? Oh, dear. Oh, don't start that. I hate that. <laughs> yes. He says that, uh, or in the paper, they say that he would have these, you know, poor women come in there and they think they their were abortion poor. was going to cost $150. <laughs> but then apparently they... he'd sock them with other charges, like for the anesthesia, you'd have to get right. them some more money and junk like that. And they found a couple of groggy women there. He had a recovery room for... Uh, <laughs> The women who had had the operation yeah. that looked in on the room where he was performing the abortions. So they could, you know, groggily look over and see another woman. Well, what should these people do? <laughs> so. <laughs> so anyway, his license was taken away. At first, he denied anything was going on. And when the uh, health department officials walked in, two clerks ran out the door. So <laughs> it's always an indication something bad is happening. <laughs> Oh, look at this in um, Vatican City. It looks like the Catholic Church is about to fess up about uh, past uh, crimes against Jews. Oh, really? Yes, they're working on a new document, Howard. Oh, look at Gilbert doing the horror. <laughs> <laughs> he just needs that. This is Hagen, she will doch nicht so reichen. I say, my God, Beautiful. Gilbert's studying to be a cantor. The Vatican stresses the document is only a draft, but it does use an ambiguous language. And you were interpreting? This is a happy day for Jews like Gilbert. They've been waiting for the Catholic Church. He's saying, this is what Gilbert prays every morning. <laughs> you broke him into prayer. <laughs> Can you sing it like in your parrot voice as a Hebrew parrot? <laughs> Would you let me tell you why he's singing? Yeah, tell me why Gilbert is singing the Jewish song. This new draft document says the Catholic Church should confess that she bears co-responsibility for the Nazi Holocaust. It says the traditional Catholic teaching of contempt toward Jews was a major reason many Christians, together with their bishops, were so prejudiced that they did not recognize the evil of the Nazi anti-Semitic persecution. Gilbert, this is the happiest day of your life. This is a joyous Gilbert, a side we never see. It wasn't until 1965 that the church finally canceled the Catholic liturgy that said Jews killed Christ. <laughs> I'm not sure I understand. You mean the Catholic Church has finally admitted? Well, in 1965, they finally dropped that thing that Jews killed Christ. Right. But they've never gone back and corrected everything that they did in the past. And right. they're now saying maybe we ought to fess up and say we had some complicity there oh, in that whole Nazi thing. So now it is official. Not official. This is just a draft. A but draft. They're considering it. Just a draft. Oh, what are you singing about, Gilbert? It's a draft. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yiddish Glenn Campbell, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Gilbert Gottfried. Gilbert, this is a happy day for your people? Yes. <laughs> Oh, this would really be a happy Jewish day. <laughs> <laughs>
Catholic. You know how to make the Jews happy. Yeah. Gilbert has been praying for the day that the Catholics would forgive him for killing Jesus Christ. <laughs> what does this song mean, Gilbert? <laughs> it's, uh, it's hard to translate. Right. <laughs> it's if a man is walking carrying a jug of water. Yeah. <laughs> And it's a sunny day. Right. <laughs> and that is a dog who is barking when it is raining. But you never, you never felt the Jews killed Jesus Christ, and this is vindication for you and your people. <laughs> <laughs> That's the song of victory. Victory. <laughs> the song of victory. The Jews are all singing. All right, thank you. All right, we we love it, but it's. It's enough. Have you seen this new trend? First Mississippi did it, and now... Wait, a new song. All right, this, very good. <laughs> what else is in the news? I I'm was saying, uh, have you noticed this trend uh, with states now? Miss first to do it, and now um, I think Florida. <laughs> Shut up, Gilbert. Chicken in his ball. They are passing laws in the state to allow them to sue tobacco companies <laughs> for uh, all the Medicaid. It has cost the state to take care of people who wind up with cigarette-related illnesses. I can't hear. I know. All right, go ahead. So, so they estimate in Florida alone that uh, they've spent 1.2 billion dollars treating illnesses caused by cigarette smoking since 1989. They want to sue the tobacco companies Ridiculous. for billions of dollars. Ridiculous. What are they going to do? Sue. Sue. I, I, I got to. What I do is I turn off his microphone Good. for a while when he comes. Uh, it's like being in a jungle. Over the top. Yeah. He's become a real pirate. He lives in the jungle. It's like a, it's like a madhouse in here. <laughs> Gilbert was on a roll. It was funny. Now you got to calm him down for he 10 won't minutes. Stop. Yeah. You just can't mellow out. Hey, you were funny. Stop. Wait for something else to happen. So anyway, it's another attack on the tobacco companies. You know, they're having those hearings in Congress trying to determine exactly when the tobacco companies knew the cigarettes were dangerous or whether cigarettes are dangerous. And now the states are jumping on the bandwagon saying we're going to sue you for... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> for causing illness. <laughs> Where are you? I don't know. I'm losing it. <laughs> for uh, well, all the illness and the Medicaid payments that it's cost. Sell so soon. <laughs> and in the White House yesterday, one staffer abruptly resigned after it was learned that three White House staffers took a helicopter to go to a golf outing in Baltimore, I feel I mean, your, in Maryland. I feel your pain. <laughs> <laughs> they were not able to come up with the exact cost of the use of a military or presidential helicopter to go to a golf course, but they do say that the cost of running such helicopter is, helicopters is $2,400 an hour. It's upsetting. Uh, the, initially, the guys involved... You know, tried to cover themselves by saying that they were scouting the place for the president, but it turned out the president really didn't have this golf country club on his itinerary. Mm. So finally, one guy resigned, another guy is going to be reassigned, and they haven't decided what to do with the third guy yet. I don't know. It would be that. pretty cool, though, to take a helicopter to a golf game. Oh, yeah, the country club yeah. thought it was such a big deal that they called the newspapers cool. Cool. to tell them to come photograph the event, and that's how they were found out. Wow. Fantastic! They could take a helicopter! <laughs> cool. 
<laughs> and finally, today is the uh, day of the big opening of the Flintstones, the movie. It was a big opening. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> Sorry, John Goodman. <laughs> it was unbelievable. I heard he got terrible reviews. Getting mixed reviews, oh, I would say. Really? Cause I've seen three stars. I've seen two and a half stars. I saw one I've and a half. One and a half. <laughs> so it's all over the place. Nobody wants Rosie O'Donnell to do well. <laughs> well they say they're very good. Are they? Yeah, but I can't see her as Betty Rubble. That's a that's a ridiculous. Betty was a piece of ass. Yeah. God. She was fantastic. She has a big opening. Yeah, she has a big opening. Robin, you have a big opening. No, I don't. Yes, you do. Going to waste. Going to waste. <laughs> and that's why it's closing. <laughs> She's trying to make it smaller. <laughs> On Maury Povich today, Lily Tomlin. <clears throat> Maury. <clears throat> Lily She's Tomlin? pushing that, uh, there's a second special of that Edith Ann cartoon. <laughs> That she does. Yeah, she's got an important career. Gilbert <laughs> plays a parrot. She plays a, at, least, at least she plays a human being in her cartoon. What is the deal with her? Who, oh, Edith Ann? No, with Lily. Yeah, no. Oh, Lily. Oh, Lily. She's not really that funny. <laughs> <laughs> she's darn, not... darn, darn. <laughs> I don't know, man. I think, no offense, Gilbert, but I think once you start doing cartoons, <laughs> it's over? Pretty much the end of the line. No. On Sally, women who are treated poorly by men but remain with them. Yeah. On Geraldo, twins claiming their father made them kill his girlfriend's husband. Hey, you know what's kind of cool? What? <laughs> Jerry Springer had those two the Siamese twins? twins join at the head. Uh -huh. Did you watch it, Gilbert? Oh, no. I oh, my that. God. I watched it. It was I could only watch like three seconds of it, and it, it confirmed in the ratings it didn't do that well. Well, look, today he has a young man afflicted with oh, yeah. that premature aging disorder who's going to turn 20. Yeah, that's always good, though. Oh, those are good. Yeah, those are the ones yeah. that look like 100 years old, yeah. and they're like young kids. Yeah, yeah but like aren't they supposed to die? So, you know, it's like... He reached 20. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. Phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, and I, meant, didn't, I forgot to mention Henry Mancini. You know, he's dying. He has an operable <laughs> cancer, and he's decided not to fight it at all. Okay. He says he's at peace. He's a very happy man, and he's continuing to work, and he'll just go whenever he goes. Unlike Gilbert, who thought he was dying, he was blubbering like a baby. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta get better. <laughs> if I'm sick, I want everyone else to suffer. <laughs> <laughs> What's it all mean? <laughs> He'll be uh, interviewed on 2020 tonight. Yeah. On Donahue today, the impact of money on relationships on Oprah has find almost anyone. <laughs> and on Montel Williams, women confront the women who broke their son's heart. <laughs> you watch um, Beavis and Butthead? Because you, you like that? Oh, yeah. Jackie and uh, Stuttering John and Gary all went to lunch the other day with that guy, Mike Judge, who invented Beavis and Butthead. Uh -huh. He's sitting and pissing and moaning. He's not getting paid any money. <laughs> well, whose fault is that? We listened yeah. to him instead. Yeah, right. Was he, was he moaning the whole time? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I don't get any what money. What did he get more than edgewise? <laughs> really? Jackie didn't have time to complain that he doesn't he, get any money. He was bitching so much, Jackie couldn't. <laughs> Jackie couldn't complain. <laughs> how do you think I feel? <laughs> yeah, how would it? Hey, man, I'm trying to tell you about my problem. <laughs> yeah, but how is this the money? Let me talk for a second. <laughs> how do you think I feel? I don't get paid anything. Big ratings on the final episode of 90210. Oh, okay. that was so good. Do you watch it? Sometimes. Let me tell you how yeah. good it was. In every scene, all the girls were wearing belly shirts where their oh, bellies very stick out. Good. Very good. And they all have really flat belly. Shannon Doherty got breast implants. Oh. She looks unbelievable. They got to bring her back. No, next they're season. not. They've got to. They're She's not the whole show. Her back. She's why I watch. Not to. Although Kari was in it with her shirt off, you saw her bra too. Maybe Kari will replace Ooh. her. She was making out with that, um, you know, the geeky guy. Ear Ian Zierling. No, the other guy, oh, David. He, oh, okay. You know, the guy who plays, like, the geeky guy. David Austin Green. Yeah, the one who plays Tori's boyfriend. Brian Austin, whatever his name is. He's turned out to be pretty good looking, and he got it on with her in a car. And it was a great episode. Oh, and, lots of, and at one point, Shannon Doherty, Tori Spelling, and this other good-looking girl unbutton their shirts and, and flashed their bras. Oh! Oh! oh. You didn't watch it? No! It was great. Boy, I would have taped that one. I have it on tape. Oh, okay. I'll be right. I actually over. slowed it down and uh, went back and rewound it. Oh. See if you see any nipples. Right. Oh. I didn't see any. No, oh, yeah. damn. I think uh, Kari's mad at us. Why? Why? Well, because she wanted to come on show as a serious actress, and we told her that the only way she could get on is if she got naked. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough. That's what Jessica Tandy did. <laughs> <laughs> She's been on three times. Yes. And look, she won an Oscar. Right. I wish I'd love to get a hold of Jessica Tandy. <laughs> Ooh, I love them old. <laughs> Do it quick. Love what? You better do it quick. Yeah. <laughs>
I love a woman with no hair. <laughs> oh. Yeah. She was unbelievable. She didn't have any hair. <laughs> she had no hair. <laughs> she didn't have hair. <laughs> Two long-time presences on... Um, presences? Presences, presences. on... Uh, <laughs> Jackie O looks better than... Uh, <laughs> No, two long-time presences on um, local New York news, Howard, are disappearing. Carol Martin and Ernie Anastos have come to the end of their runs on WCBS-TV. Yeah. Today's the last time you can see either of them. They were really great news. Ernie right. continues to be them. upbeat, however. Yeah, I'll find something to do. <laughs> I did an Ernie Anastos commercial, and now he's going off the air. Yeah, yeah what's that yeah. all about? Uh, we were I, shocked. because it was like, pretty much buried him. It was a funny commercial, yeah. too. Was it Gilbert goes on and goes, Hey, this is Ernie on Yeah, I love it. <laughs> it was good. And why are they running commercials for him if he's leaving? I wanted him to have one good week. Watch, like now he'll be off Channel 2 News and like a year from now he'll be reading he plays a parrot in a oh, cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's in the return of John for number five, replacing Gilbert as the parrot. <laughs> Jafir. In his 20s and 30s, he says, he juggled family, work, and school. Well, no, he doesn't have to juggle anymore. He says, I found that if I put in the time and the energy, it would work. Those were the sacrifice years. But they were good years, according to Anastos. This is really funny, too. Look how far they had to Yeah, I know, I know. I, you know what? I brought this, I'm the one who brought this in today, too. Yeah, look, what? I brought in the same exact oh, thing. Really? I said, yeah, oh, I said, yeah. Talk oh, about I love this. Look, look at this. <laughs> Wait, Robin, look at this. What? The headlines this are like is the, the three This is the tall. big ad in the newspaper for Beverly Hills Cop 3. Uh huh. So they give, like, it says, a fun filled roller coaster ride. Now, you know, Beverly Hills Cop 3 got tons of bad reviews. It wasn't yeah. one good review. Everyone said it really sucked, and everyone knew it was going to suck. But, so, but they have to, have, like, fill it up with quotes. Uh huh. So look who they went to, like, Neil Rosen of New York One News. Oh, oh no. You got to read, oh. you know, it's really <laughs> embarrassing. Here's one. Jim Ferguson from KMSB TV. Where's that? <laughs> I don't know. I think it's um it's a suburb of Boise. Yeah, I think it's an intern somewhere <laughs> one of the one of the TV stations out in uh, Boise. Eddie Murphy's Axel Foley has never been funnier. An action thriller loaded with laughs. Who said that? Jim Ferguson of KMSB. <laughs> He'll say Here. anything. Even Brian Adams of KICU TV says Beverly Hills Cop 3 is three times the fun as the original. Uh, <laughs> a thrill ride full of action and no Gilbert. <laughs> you had fun doing Beverly Hills Cop 2, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. Those Eddie's are great, great. reviews. <laughs> These are great reviews for yes. the movie. Eddie should be very proud of himself. <laughs> putting a lot of effort into his career. Best movie ever. Bill Jenkins, Weekly Reader. Yeah. <laughs> oh, stop it. They didn't go that far. Almost. <laughs> Way to go. Oh. But anyway, Ernie, it's his last uh, night tonight at, uh, at 11 o'clock. Yeah, I think they're going to play clips of run. past newscasts. <laughs> and now he started this company, and he owns a couple of TV stations. He's employed all of his kids. It's a good deal. He started a production company? Uh, no, he owns a couple of TV stations. You know, Ernie Anastas? Markets or something. You're He's kidding me. He's part owner with family and friends of a TV station in Kingston, New York. Yeah, I think it's KMSB TV. And a low power <laughs> TV station in Nyack. Oh, and really? Along with some potential cable carriage deals. White elephant. <laughs> maybe yoked together to create a news presence in the Hudson Valley. Yeah. His daughter, Nina, is a reporter anchor there with her fiance, Greg Floyd. Way to go. Everyone seems son, like they're really branching out. His yeah. son, Philip. We'll work there this summer. Well, I hope my kids do that, just like work for me the rest of their lives. <laughs> <laughs> then they're also developing something called the American Business Journal, which his wife will work on. Mm, that's great. <laughs> so he'll never be apart from his family. There's not a moment in the day that he won't see someone he's related to. They're already talking about expanding and are negotiating with the owner of two stations in Florida and one mm. in Alabama. I bet auditions were tough to get those oh, yeah. on-air jobs. <laughs> I didn't know they were my kids. <laughs> In addition to that, won't he be opening a diner? Because he is Greek. <laughs> so don't cry for Ernie. Don't cry for me, Ernie Onastos. <laughs> I only come from Argentina. Uh -huh. Well, Gilbert, uh, thanks for sharing that song with us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It's a happy day for Gilbert. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, Gilbert, thank you. Gilbert Goffrey, who plays the voice of the parrot in The Return of Jafar. No, no Jewish songs. You yes. Dark night, ah! You see, if a man is walking and he sees a parrot, it is, uh, that's uh, the part of the song. <laughs> An interpretation in English. Thank you. Gilbert, happy because the Christians uh, now say... The Catholics. The Catholics now say that the Jews did not kill Jesus Christ, but the... Uh, but they're not sure. They're not sure. They're drafting, they're drafting something. something. Yeah, like they're, they're trying to come up with some wording that'll let the Jews off the hook. <laughs> who did it, Rabbi, who do you think uh, actually killed the uh, Jesus Christ? The Schwarzes. Okay. <laughs> And now you would want to rejoice in <laughs> Gilbert, seriously, congratulations on playing the voice of the parrot again <laughs> in the return of Jafar. I remember Peggy Lee played the uh, Siamese cat in the uh, animated and movie. what it yes. did for her. Yeah, she disappeared off the face of the earth. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's still around, isn't she? Sure she is. Yeah. 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 She's got a lifetime contract, doesn't she? <laughs> No, she, I see her around. She She's does making a, a big comeback. Anyway, at the uh, Just for Laughs Comedy Festival in Montreal in July, it's Gilbert. If you want to fly all the way to Montreal oh, yeah. just to see Gilbert, he wants to show you he's busy with very big events. Oh, and oh then, he gets then, invited to the comedy festival. USA Up All Night, which That's is right. very major. Still doing that? How yes. many years have you been doing oh, that? Oh, too long. Right. <laughs> we all agree. Yes. <laughs> uh, Jackie Did you think Gilbert was going somewhere for a while? He was appearing on the network award shows. Yeah. And, awards. and then he screwed up. <laughs> and TV shows. And then all of a sudden, like, even Disney had accepted him and all this stuff. And then Gilbert was even on all these award shows. And people were actually looking forward to seeing Gilbert on yeah. the award shows. And they, he was considered a genius. So he goes on. There were the things being written. Comedians, comedians. Right. You know? Yeah. Whole... Yeah. All that. And then Gilbert goes on the... Um, on the, the Emmys. Uh, the Emmys. Yes. And now it's real legitimate. It's the Emmys. Gilbert comes out, and he's trying to be funny. He's doing a shtick. Yes. And it really, you know, it wasn't that offensive if, you're, if you've got a brain over a 12-year-old. Well, it was right at the time of Pee Wee Herman. Right. And all of a sudden, the camera flashes to, like, like um, the, the, the Golden Girls. Mm -hmm. What's her name? The blonde. Rue McClanahan. Rue McClanahan, and the one who was married to Alan Ludd a 100 years ago. Oh, Betty White. Betty White, and, and Beatrice Arthur. I don't know who it was. It was I think it was Betty White, and they were all like, <gasps> masturbation. Well, they were having an aneurysm. Yeah, right. Yeah. Everyone had, didn't everyone like come out against you afterwards? Oh, and yeah. And that's it. No one even wants it. Now yeah. all Hollywood is Oh, they forgot you. the awards. All the articles were about Gilbert today right. and how bad he was. All I said was, if masturbation's a crime, I should be on death row. Yeah, that was the big line. Yeah, that, was, that was the most offensive And it was considered thing. ridiculous. And now Gilbert can't get arrested. That's a fact. Yeah. Now, now he's a parrot. Yeah. <laughs> Since I had to pick me up. Yeah. All right, wait a minute. I have to break in with a news story. Uh-oh. Are you sure? Is it Memorial Day over, Robin? No, no, no. This is from El Paso, Texas. Uh -oh. You know how we always have to give preference to news articles about people in radio. Uh-oh. El Paso, Texas, radio newsman Hal Chestnut is back on the air at his old station, KTSM AM 1380, but he still hasn't settled his legal problems. He was recently hired as a co-host with John Laird of Talk with an Attitude from 7 to 10 a.m. Monday through Friday. Previously, he had been at another station or at the same station as the news director for 19 months but was fired last year after he was arrested on public lewdness charges, police said he was cited for allegedly receiving oral sex from a transvestite prostitute downtown. <laughs> and then things turned ugly. <laughs> Gee, I hope it doesn't hurt his radio career. It's such an honorable profession. <laughs> In an industry filled with people who pick up girls on request lines, I, I don't think he's got anything to worry about. <sighs> he never showed up for his court hearing on October 22nd. Gilbert sitting there with jealous face. Yes. <laughs> but Where did he find this transvestite? <laughs> he was unaware of any court date. Hmm. And we'll wait to hear from the court about trying to settle that situation. He says he was never notified. He's 61 years old. Wow. He never missed a court date in his life, so he probably had a lot of run-ins. Glad you told us, Robin. It'll make my weekend. <laughs> well, you feel better about yourself working in radio. You're not kidding. At least I'm not the biggest embarrassment in the industry now. I envy him. He's <laughs> got a career and a sex life. <laughs> <laughs> See, you're a parrot. Yeah. You know, Eddie Murphy has transformed himself. He is so handsome now. <laughs> that was a really good move. You know what? The station says they hired him. They rehired him this month because they wanted to go with something different. <laughs> <laughs> 
One eight hundred fifty two Stern. See our backstage uh, tape and uh, also be- returning to the radio Sorry? station. Howard, he had been working in construction. Oh. One eight hundred fifty two Stern. She wants you to know that though. <laughs> One eight hundred. Our profession. One eight hundred fifty two stern. Yeah, he needs a lot of credentials. <laughs> Isn't it great to be in an industry where, like, I went to college because oh, yeah. I wanted to be in radio. My father used to say to me, "Jackass, <laughs> don't go to college for something else. To be in radio, your garbage man can be in, in radio." And he's right. Construction workers yes. go into radio with, with transvesta. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and they're doing better than most guys. Hey, anyway, uh, 1-800-52-STERN. You want to spend some real quality, fun time around your TV set, you get this videotape. It's lots of new stuff, too. And also, it's uh, thirty nine ninety five, four fifty 450 shipping and handling, but you must be 18 or older because it's, it's quite dirty. And it's brought to you by Infinity Ventures and me. 1-800-52-STERN. Also, the Leroy Neiman uh, poster is in there as well. Jackie Platinum, Joe Page Martling. Here comes in the backyard. He says, Bob, Bob, Mom just got hit by a bus. Son, you know my lips are chapped. Please don't make me smile. <laughs> What? Uh, <laughs> no, wait, I didn't get that. Son, no, you son. know my lips are chapped. No, Please don't make me smile. Oh, it would hurt if he smiled with chapped lips? Well, she's going to smile because her husband was just hit by a bus. She's going to break out a big grin and she uh. might hurt her chapped lips. No, he goes too fast. Middle-aged divorcee wants to sleep with a black guy. She's dying to sleep with a black guy. She goes to a bar, has a few drinks, meets the black guy, brings him home, brings him in the bedroom, takes off all her clothes, lies in bed, spreads her legs, she says, Night, pal! Do what you do best. So he grabs a TV and runs out the door. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, that, uh, that one I get. No, that you understand. There you go. Okay. That wasn't too fast for you. There you go. Thank you, <laughs> Jackie, uh, you know, that's just a taste of Jackie. Yeah, that's on his big CD. Girl's on a witness stand. The judge says, what happened? She's was walking down the sidewalk and he grabbed me and he dragged me to Hallie. And he ripped off my dress and pulled out my pants and threw me over a garbage can. <laughs> I don't even remember what happened next. The judge said, make some up. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're on a roll now, Jack. Hey, he's got me there. There's two, on a, two of them There's here. 70 minutes of that. 78. So, I can't get enough. I'm sorry. I wish he'd made it a little longer. Uh, the price includes full-color uh, Joke Land catalog. Only $10 plus three shipping and handling. Call 1-800-323-5464. Tonight, one big show at uh, Vinnie Brand's Stress Factory at the New Brunswick Hyatt Regency. There's not too many seats available. Available. Please hurry, she, or else you'll miss Jackie. And also go over there and meet lots of uh, girls. Usually a lot of good-looking girls show oh, yeah, for Jackie. They, they flock to him. Groupies. And then when they can't get in Jackie's pants, they end up with you. Hey, I'll be on Letterman June 24th. Uh, the Fred... Sorry, Gilbert. I just got a real... Yes. What? Why are you on? Why The Fred Norris Band. Why, why, Fred, how come they named it the Fred Norris Band? Because that's the only name we could all agree on. I came up with about a dozen other names. Nobody liked it, so we stuck with it. Like what? What name did you want to call it? I have a list at home. I'll bring it in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't hide it from us. The Fred Norris Band will be at the downtime Tuesday at 7 p.m. It's on 30th Street between 7th and 8th Avenue in Manhattan. Don't miss Stuttering John's Band appearing at the Pennsylvania State Fair at Philadelphia Park Racetrack in Beth Salem, Pennsylvania this Friday night. And Stuttering John's Band will be at the Agora in Cleveland next Friday night, June 3rd. For more information, call 609-546-STUPID. Yeah. He's got a record out on Atlantic. <laughs> and if you're planning a wedding or summer party and you need a great DJ, call Scott the Engineer's Rocket Entertainment in the New York Tri-State area. Call 718-BAG. Fifty forty, Scott the engineer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fifty forty. Plug. <laughs> All right, so very good. What is this, stuttering, John? You know what the worst thing is? I talk to Gilbert, <laughs> yeah, and I stutter, and he like holds in the laughter, but you can see his face. <laughs> <laughs> Gilbert's happy he has someone he can laugh at. Sometimes he gets caught and makes up words yeah. like. <laughs> you ever seen when his face locks up? Oh, yeah. He turns into Charlie Callis. Yeah. Well, those guys, you can tell he feels bad about laughing, but he can't hold it in. You know? Yeah, and it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> I could look at I could look at uh, Stuttering John and talk to him and not laugh when he. But then if Jackie's in the room, oh, he starts Jackie. laughing at John because Jackie just stares at him and then starts laughing. 
<laughs> Jackie has like no yes, heart. Yeah. Jackie doesn't hold anything back. No. He lets yeah. it all out. I thought biting the inside of my mouth. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. Just, but you can see it. You can yeah, see right. his face like breaking up. <laughs> <laughs> Gilbert's trying to be sensitive. I get like tears in my yeah, But Jackie just laughs in your face. He doesn't even wait. He doesn't even try to be sensitive. At some point, I'm like, Gilbert, just laugh. Laugh already. Get what is it, Gary? Here's an impersonation of Jackie laughing while Josh stuttering. He just stares at him and he goes, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll see you. Uh, have a good Labor Day. We'll see you on Tuesday. What? We'll see you. Uh, have a good Labor Day. We'll see you on Tuesday. What? We'll see you. Uh, have a good Labor Day. We'll see you on Tuesday. What? We'll see you. Uh, have a good Labor Day. We'll see you on Tuesday. What? We'll see you. Uh, have a good Labor Day. We'll see you on Tuesday. What? We'll see you. Uh, have a good Labor Day. We'll see you on Tuesday. What? We'll see you. Uh, have a good Labor Day. We'll see you on Tuesday. What? We'll see you. Uh, have a good Labor Day. We'll see you on Tuesday. What? We'll see you. Uh, have a good Labor Day. We'll see you on Tuesday. What? We'll 